Hello everyone and welcome to ProRPA.com. This week um, we'll be continuing with our PDF automation that we discussed last week. Um, like last week we discussed about large data extraction from the PDF documents. So this week we'll be talking about specific data extraction, right? So we have a few um, methods to accomplish this. But first and foremost, um, what I would ask you to do is to uh, make sure that your settings within the Adobe Acrobat, which is like the most commonly used PDF viewer um, application, viewing application, right? Um, the, the settings uh, which I'm going to show you should precisely match with uh, what you have in your system, right? So for that, um, just open Adobe Acrobat Reader um, DC. I'm sure you might have it. If not, it's free to download and install, so feel free. Go to Edit, and uh, under the Accessibility, check this option, Setup Assistant, right? And um, I'm going to show you all these, like, you can see everything in the screenshots here, right? And um, what I want you to do is just ensure that whatever is selected in here precisely matches with what you have in your system, right? So set all accessibility options is right then none of these the high contrast colors or text smoothing or anything is selected here the field highlight color is light blue and um, required field highlight color is red and info reading order from document yes that's the one that is recommended none of the options are selected then for large documents only read the currently visible pages yeah maximum a minimum number of pages in large document is 50 and uh, next just select the last option display PDF documents in the web browser as well and done right okay so once you have these settings then um, you can move forward and uh, we can discuss the first activity that we're gonna talk um, that we're gonna discuss is um, gonna be the get text activity right so if you remember last week we discussed the PDF activity like uh, read PDF text which was used to read the selectable data from the PDF documents, right? We used to give the range of the pages and um, you were all set to, you know, extract data from that particular page or throughout the document, depends, right? So in here, we'll be using the get text activity and um, as the name itself tells you, it takes out the text value or the extracts the text value from uh, the UI element that we're gonna provide. So I have a PDF document in here, which is um, hotel bill, and uh, right, and um, let's say I want to get this this complete data, the total data, right. So what I have to do is simply indicate that on screen which particular data it is, right. And if you see that uh, you're not able to select the data, right, you, you see that the whole document is being selected right now. So what you can do is just make sure that uh, those changes that I just mentioned, those properties that I just mentioned are uh, there, right? So that's what it's going to happen if like, you will not be able to select. Let me show you. Despite the fact that it is selectable data, right, in here, you might not be able to select the data when you are, uh, select the UI element when you're using the activity within the workflow because you know either your settings are not there like the settings that I just mentioned or right now I'm not opening the file in the Adobe Acrobat Reader this is a PDF exchange editor which is not what I need so if you remember last time also I was working with this uh, Adobe Acrobat because that's what is recommended and um, that's how you can probably mark it as um, the default PDF viewer application in your system and um, you can play around with it right another thing to note is whenever you're working with um, you know either with virtual environments or with PDF documents or with Excel documents right if you have to do some some set of computations it's always a good practice to first minimize uh, maximize the uh, window of the target document and then put it to 100% or something right this is a selectable element so it should be fairly easy that way every time you'll have like if you're dealing with multiple documents of similar layout then you'll have a um, good reference point to start with make sense right so every time the file is gonna be here and uh, you can you know 
uh, click or use drag and drop options to go to this um, to you know uh, use the scroll bar and um, you have this data the total and the balance and stuff so you indicate on screen which particular data element it is you see right now also it's not going on you can select the elements but it is not giving you the option right so what I would ask is go back check this setup assistant again yeah that is correct reading Last documents only read the current visible pages. Yep, last one done. Let's try that again. You see, it's working now. You're able to get uh, select the particular UI elements, right? Let's say I want to get this data because that's what I can select, right? So it depends on the PDF document and how it has been laid out but usually like let's say if I'm staying here at this particular hotel on a weekly monthly yearly I don't know whatever basis uh, then uh, the invoice overall layout and structure is gonna be the same because these are usually like the automatic system generated PDF files right so you simply take this UI element right store it in a value say hotel value I have this uh, variable already with me and uh, let's print this hotel value right fairly easy and uh, using the get text method I'm running the program and you can see the value right there right you can it's a string variable now the hotel value variable so you can you know um, split it based on you know whatever value is gonna be let's say this star star space total the number of characters in in the initial string is gonna be always the same so you can simply trim out let's say first uh, three four five six seven eight nine characters and uh, after like five or six characters you can take out the rest as well using some string manipulation operations right and that way you can have or I mean if there's something else that you want to do you can always go ahead and and um, start playing around with that data once you have that data in the workflow yeah that works right so that's how you get uh, the editable data within your from your PDF documents into your workflow right fairly simple um, give it a shot and always the the, the um, most important thing to remember is that your PDF settings should be exactly as I just mentioned right so just save them keep them intact and make Adobe Acrobat as your uh, default you know PDF viewing application and you should be all set great alright so now let's discuss the next activity that we have and this activity doesn't precisely um, like perform the data extraction process but it facilitates the overall extraction process and it's not limited to PDF automations right it is something that you can use um, like in my experience I've used it in SAP automation and in Oracle automations in in the CRM applications or any external application that you have used so far right this activity can help you in um, selecting the correct UI element so that um, you can perform the computations on it whether it's data extraction or anything else right so this is very uh, useful activity especially at times when you may not be able to find a reliable selector right and the activity is called anchor base right it's this is a perfect area for us to discuss anchor base because uh, the usefulness of this activity is tremendous right so um, it is divided into two separate panes one is the anchor and the other one is the action activity where the actual action takes place right so anchor is like um, a point relative to which the UI element uh, you know exists so um, like the best example is uh, I'll show you I have another hotel receipt here right and uh, it's got these some charges and some references and some stuff and um, the total balance is zero because let's say everything has been paid off but every time the last day the checkout day um, is the no description uh, uh, is provided and the final amount is provided 
right so no description is going to act as an anchor to the final amount of the bill right there's like a lot of other stuff right if you can see like the group number if i was assigned a group number so this label group number this text would have served as an anchor to the group number which would have been here same is the case with the rewards number whatever it is or guest number or whatever right so um, that's how the anchor points are. We have had anchor points for a while actually, but uh, to be able to make them use in, uh, um, in, in our workflows, it's a separate task and for this we are using this activity. So um, usually anchor points are related to the find image or uh, like the image activities that we have within our um, UiPath Studio. So, right, let's say we have find image or a f image exists is also another uh, activity, right? Mm. Right, checks if an image is, ex this, uh, is existing in the document or not. This one is not working, so let's take out find image. Let's take this into consideration, right? So, once you are finding the image you have to let's say find wherever the no description is written and because you will have this whole thing as blank in like because I'm gonna explain this to you so imagine this this is a system generated hotel receipt right so that means um, I'm gonna get pretty much the same layout if I'm staying at this hotel on a weekly basis the same hotel then my layout for the bill is going to be the same because it's a system generated um, document right so the overall layout has been already preset and um, uh, only these details like these dates and these charges and uh, these references and all that stuff would be changing right but the overall layout the look and feel of the document is going to be the is going to remain intact so um, what I did was every time the last day the checkout activity the checkout date will have a no description um, row with uh, all the other references and charges as blank and the final amount as the uh, the sum of all the charges that I that were incurred during my stay make sense so that's why the image I chose was not just of no description but even included this white space that way I chose a reliable way to get to the final amount that I'm gonna have right you may want to keep the image till here or something right so that um, if the price is way too much if you stayed there for a month or for a f couple of months the price would be thousands or I don't know hundred thousand dollars or whatever tens of thousands of dollars and uh, you know you don't want that you I mean you, you would want uh, the element to be selected correctly not like uh, the image to be till here so that it might make a problem right so it's better to keep some safe distance as well but if you're sure that there are gonna be white spaces and for this to, to you know make these sort of decisions you need to have several um, PDF documents of similar layout right that you'll be working with so that you can uh, make these sort of ad hoc decisions that what sort of image you want your bot to find and corresponding to the decision the boolean value that it's gonna give out you wanna um, go ahead and uh, extract the data or perform any other operation that you may want to right so we have we found this uh, let's say we're gonna find this image and then we're gonna extract the data so we're gonna use the get text activity same as before and uh, the element is this one right and that way we're now able to generate a reliable selector and it's gonna get to this element only if this image is found right and uh, I didn't set uh, the value let's put it as hotel value again the same that we used before and uh, let's connect these okay save and let's try and run it and see if we are able to get the data alright so it means it was able to find the image as well right so um, that ha that's how you will be I'm sure um, this one because we were able to select the UI element pretty nicely this was okay but imagine right last week we did the OCR image uh, you know data extraction process and stuff how about 
you try using the OCR because OCR is always a beast to tame. I mentioned this couple of times, probably since the time we have been uh, going, we have been having this connection of um, the blocks that we are working on. So um, try using an anchor base and in the actions use the OCR method to get the data out and uh, use some anchor points so that you're able to at least get directed to the correct UI element where the extraction needs to happen. Right? Try this out. It's going to be a really good exercise and um, you can see that your uh, ways of getting to the OCR related element also increases tremendously and very reliably because of uh, because of this anchor base activity. Trust me, there are there are like um, in, in in let me give you another practical example in SAP applications, right? There are many a times like um, in the GRC controls and stuff, and the audit purposes, um, there are like a lot of uh, icons and data that look very very similar literally like same sort of icons and and you won't be able to decipher uh, which icon to click to because uh, you know they might have separate labels attached to them and uh, you want to look up and uh, you know uh, get your operations click operations or whatever operations you're performing to the correct UI element and for this anchor base activity actually is a savior Seriously, it's one of the most prominently used and important activities, so uh, definitely try out more stuff. If find image, uh, try out the image, uh, find element, another activity that you can use as the anchor point. And if the element is selectable, yeah, this might be a good catch, right? Image exists, definitely you can try. There are cases where uh, it can be used, I'm sure. So uh, give that a shot and... Uh, that pretty much concludes the PDF automations, right? Um, once you have the data, because PDF are usually we'll be dealing with the data or the image type data, uh, and uh, we have discussed both those scenarios when we consolidate the last week uh, blog post and this week blog post. So, you know, feel free to check them out. Try out your own exercises. It's they, they really help you out in the long run. Once you get the look and feel and the overall grasp of the application, it becomes really easy to automate pretty much a lot of stuff that you go in your daily ID processes right um, alrighty uh, if you haven't checked out please uh, do check out my ebook series the CRISPR learning series which is available on Amazon worldwide and also I have the video tutorials like the way we are interacting here I have discussed all these topics in greater detail um, in my um, video courses which are available on Udemy and Skillshare so feel free to check them out with the same name CRISPR Learning for UiPath and we also have the CRISPR Learning for Blue Prism as well along with the ebook so uh, these resources can really come handy once you if you wanna learn um, RP applications on a on a fast and on a on a you know speedier basis so that's pretty much it thank you very much guys I'll see you next week thanks bye